Okay, we've got a lot to talk about today, especially if you're a fan of AMD. And even if you're not, what we're gonna talk about today is going to affect everybody, so you should probably listen. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, it's Christmas, can't wait. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Guys, he came, he came. <sighs> what time is it? Guys, I got a Fractal Design Kelvin S36. Oh no, it is like way too early for this. Uh, I'll get the coffee. Okay. <sighs> Jeepers! A custom build by Jays to set it aside a fractal design and defy Nano S. I love the holidays. Golly! A fractal design core 500! Yep. Guys, look! Land party for days! This is what makes it all worth it. This season, spoil the ones you love with the gift of awesomeness. Happy Holidays from Fractal Design. Okay, so we have got more information now about Zen. Excuse me, I mean Ryzen. I mean Summit Ridge. Whatever. Which is the only reason I'm even willing to talk about it today because I've said a million times I don't like to talk about rumor. But we are at a big crossroads here when it comes to desktop CPUs. And so I thought this information might be important, especially for people who are on the cusp of buying new hardware that you might want to just hold off for just a second. And if you already bought something, especially if you bought an AMD CPU, don't freak out because still there's a lot of unanswered questions and those are, those are some of the things I want to bring up today. So AMD just did a press conference where they showed some more raw performance of Summit Ridge versus an i7 6900K, which is an $1,100 CPU. So let's keep that in mind as we move forward. Because these specs are new, I have not get them memorized, so I'm going to be using a bit of a cheat sheet here. Sue me. But when you go down the list here, the specs are nearly identical to the 6900K i7, uh, of course, which is a Broadwell eBay CPU. Uh, again, $1,100 CPU. I want to point that out. That's what retail is, $1,100. So we are seeing AMD here going toe-to-toe -to -toe with a $1,000 CPU from Intel. Actually, it's more than $1,000 depending on where you buy it, but I digress. All right, so AMD's Ryzen here is built on a 14 nanometer FinFET architecture. It's got eight cores and 16 threads, just like the uh, 6900K. It's got a 3.4 gigahertz base clock, 200 megahertz up from the 3.2 found on the Intel. It has got an unknown turbo boost. AMD has not divulged any of that information yet. They're kind of keeping that a little bit secret here. They don't want to tip off their hat too much to Intel. Uh, but Intel will boost to 3.7 with a max turbo boost of 4 gigahertz. So we've got to see if, Intel, if AMD is going to even match that. I have no reason to believe they wouldn't. In fact, um, I'd be surprised if we aren't seeing numbers here that are deep into the 4 gigahertz range as we start getting our hands on those and start seeing what they'll boost to and overclock to. Uh, they both have 20 megabytes of cache and they both operate uh, DDR4 memory. Now here's where things start to differ just a little bit here. Intel uses a quad channel memory setup on their X99 based CPUs, which of course the 6900K is. AMD is only using a dual channel. Now, whether or not that's gonna hurt it in the long run, I guess we'll just have to wait and see. This is only gonna matter to people who are using their CPUs to the absolute limit. People who are doing extreme CAD drawing, 3D modeling, uh, even rendering and doing 4K rendering with quad channels, not gonna be as big of a hit compared to, or with dual channels compared to quad channels. So I don't see that as being a huge issue. But again, that's something we'll have to test once we get our hands on it to see what kind of differences there really are. Um, I guess one thing to do would be take like a 5960X or a 6900K, which are about the same CPU, and we are going to have to disable or take two sticks of memory out and compare. In fact, I think that's a test I'll have to do here. I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal for people who are doing, especially things like games and YouTube and streaming and stuff like that. Of course, the more memory channels, the better. I'm kind of curious as to why AMD stuck with a dual channel configuration. AMD is touting 95 watt TDP on their eight core 16 thread Ryzen CPU. That's that's huge because you guys have always made the jokes, AMD is known as the space heater in the winter. Uh, yeah, and you know, the temperature of the sun in the summer. Of course, those jokes have always 
been uh, applicable to the Radeon graphics side more so than the CPU, but 95 watt TDP, that is a huge, huge improvement over the 140 watt TDP found on the comparable Intel here. Now we don't know what pricing is gonna be yet, but it's kind of what I wanna talk about mostly today on how this is going to affect the community is gonna be based entirely on price because we've already seen in the latest uh, benchmarks here from AMD and the live benchmarks that with no turbo clock enabled on their CPU, remember they did, they, that's a question mark. We don't know what it's gonna actually turbo clock up to yet. 3.4 gigahertz was beating the 6900K in various tests like Handbrake and ZBrush or ZBrush Core and of course um, Blender. We, if the core can go farther in terms of speed, then we're seeing with Intel, then we're gonna see a better performance out of AMD at a lesser TDP, which is going to force a kind of a movement here in the CPU market, which has been very stagnated. Now that's what this has to do with the community here, because if you're not having competition in the space, you have no incentive to spend big R&D numbers to get better performance because you're already dominating a market, which Intel has had a solid 10 years of just uh, bored and not really doing much and giving us really shitty improvements. Intel, I think you've done some great things, but you've really let the desktop community down as far as I'm concerned with the improvements we've seen over the last four or five generations by giving us this TikTok method here of a slight inc increase in performance in clock numbers and then very small architecture changes. So there's really been no reason to spend a bunch of money in the community. But if AMD is finally able to compete and give Intel a run for their money, prices have to come down. I can't see AMD really trying to compete at the $1,000 CPU market. So the question is, how much is it gonna cost them to make this CPU? And how much is it going to uh, cost the community to adopt this CPU? Because I don't see a lot of AMD fans who've really based their entire love for AMD being based on performance per dollar running out and spending $1,000 on a CPU. I don't see them running out and spending $750 on a CPU. In fact, if you guys remember when the AMD 9590 first came out, they tried a ridiculous $1,000 price tag on that because it was actually achieving five gigahertz. Um, yeah, the community pretty much laughed at that. And what do they cost today? Um, $199. Yeah, I mean, look how far that's come down. It's an 80% price drop because the community did not adopt it. Then again, the performance <clears throat> really wasn't there either. But the performance is there now. What's the price going to be? Because if they come out with something like swinging, let's just say 500 bucks, okay? I, that's still a lot for an AMD CPU, and that's a lot for the community to really gamble with with a company that has really kind of lost its way over the and gone through high CEO turnover and just really, really have, has not been there for the extreme performance market. So that's a big gamble right now. If you jump on Team AMD's bandwagon moving forward is what is the upgrade path going to be? Unfortunately, if you've adopted AM3 recently, you cannot adopt this CPU because AM4 is a new platform moving forward. Now there's something else I kind of want to talk about here. Actually a couple things. There's so much I could talk about here, but these are just some questions that I've had for the community. And th this is why this is kind of an open-ended video here where I want you guys to have a adult and civil conversation. I know this is asking an awful lot of the YouTube comment section. It's how you guys feel this is going to play out. We're not going to see any of this until early 2017. It's been pushed back a little bit. We were expecting a Q3, Q4 2016. It's now Q1 2017. But that's probably one of the major questions I have right now is what is the upgrade path going to be? And not only that, what is the CPU lineup going to be? They can't debut this with just one CPU. Yeah, I know they have server CPU coming out, the extreme CPU like we just saw, and then notebook CPUs, but there, what is the lineup going to be within that desktop range right there? Is it just going to be this one CPU that you can adopt at XYZ dollars and that's it? Or are they going to have a shaved down version like a four core eight thread or even a four core with no hyper threading? I mean, what? that's some of the biggest questions I have right there because you're only going to adopt that mainstream performance per dollar market if you have obviously options. The other thing that kind of sucks about this though is to take advantage of the new CPUs is you have to adopt Windows 10. 
Microsoft has sort of strong-armed Windows 10 down the throats of PC users everywhere. And now you can only adopt the new CPU architectures on both AMD and Intel. Kaby Lake is also going to require Windows 10, which really, really sucks. But if you're not gonna update to Windows 10, then don't bother upgrading your CPU. Now, nobody's got a chance to actually test yet what's gonna happen with the new CPUs if you try and run it on an older operating system because they're not in anyone's hands yet. But that's a question that's waiting to be asked. So what does this mean for the community? It could mean some great things if price competition is starting to take place. I don't think AMD and Intel are going to try and battle it out at the thousand dollar price mark. I just don't. And I'm really, really hoping here and I'm praying to Gaben that somehow AMD has made this manufacturing process affordable for them and they can do it at a huge, huge upset of like 500 bucks for a performance-based CPU that's matching the 6900K at $1,100. That will shake up everything. So am I gonna run out and build a system using Summit Ridge? Of course I am. You guys know I'm going to. This is huge. This is not something I'm gonna leave on the table and not try out. I feel like I need to have a permanent test bench set up as well with uh, Summit Ridge so that we can do side-by-side -side comparisons and see exactly how things uh, are performing there. And I would be doing the community a disservice if I didn't cover both of those, especially now that we've got a level playing field about to take place here in the CPU market, as long as the train doesn't derail, which unfortunately, rooting for AMD, their trains never seem to stay on the track, especially when it comes to their marketing team. So guys, don't mess this one up. Don't mess this one up. All eyes are on you guys. I'm gonna be blunt, don't fuck it up, okay? All right, guys, that's been my two cents. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Please try and keep it civil, fanboyisms aside. This is big for everyone. AMD and AMD, uh, AMD and AMD fans alike, of course, but AMD and Intel fans alike. We might finally, for the first time in a decade, see some true competition taking place here in the CPU market. It's exciting. Sound off in the comments, guys, and as always, don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.